You're listening to The Mike Smith Show. All right. Let's talk about praying in city council meetings now, specifically the city of Parksville. Now, if you go back to their inauguration meeting in Parksville after the most recent municipal election, an official from a local Baptist church was invited uh, to that meeting where he delivered blessings for the assembled people there at Parksville City Council. Now, critics of this say this is illegal. If you go back to previous Supreme Court of Canada ruling, They find that this was illegal, praying at a municipal council meeting unconstitutional as it violates the state's duty of religious neutrality. This has now resulted in a lawsuit against the city of Parksville. Let's discuss it now with my guest, Ian Bushfield. Ian is the executive director of the BC Humanist Association. I'm very pleased to welcome him. Ian, thank you for coming on today. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Good morning to you. I appreciate this a lot. This is interesting. So let's go back to this uh, incident now that has sparked your your lawsuit here. Precisely what happened here? You had a, is this a Baptist minister who came into the the, the council meeting? Yeah, uh, it's Andrew Gulovich. He's from the Parksville Fellowship Baptist Church. In 2018, the Parksville inaugural meeting opened with a different member of that church. Uh, I forget their exact titles, but they're both pastors there. Yeah. Uh, sure. They came on invitation from the city, right, to give an invocation or a blessing, and they did that, right? And they did it within their faith tradition, which ends in, I pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus, amen, and they go about their day. Um, I will note, I, I looked up this church, and on their website, they actually say they respect the separation of church and state, so there's a little irony in there. But we've been following this issue for a few years because we've been trying to track since that Supreme Court decision that was back in 2015, how many councils across BC and even across Canada are actually following that? Because I think most people will know that a lot of city councils used to open quite regularly with prayer, not all of them, but quite a few. And when that Supreme Court decision came down, it should have put a stop to them all. And what we found is that number has decreased, but there was still about six or seven in 2022 that opened their inaugural meeting in BC with a prayer, with Parksville being one of the most um, overtly Christian. Okay, and that included the city of Vancouver too, right? Yeah, the city of Vancouver, very interestingly, hadn't had prayer uh, since at least Sam Sullivan's time as mayor, but in 2022, at the request of Ken Sim, there was a multi-faith greeting of religious representatives And so there was five different religious uh, representatives came up and delivered kind of a collective prayer. There were two Christians, a Jewish representative, a Sikh, and a Muslim. Uh, Notably, there wasn't a Buddhist, despite there being more Buddhists in Vancouver than there are Sikh, uh, sorry, more Buddhists than there are Jews. And so Hmm. we're still looking at working on Vancouver. We've written to all of the municipalities that we identified in our last report in the fall that had prayer in 2022. And really just Vancouver and Parksville haven't committed to keeping future meetings secular. Okay, well, let's go back to that Vancouver City Council inauguration meeting here. So this is 2022, and let's listen to a little bit of this. And you're going to hear part of a, like a Christian pastor who comes to the front of the meeting and says some remarks here. So let's listen. So this is the 2022 Vancouver City Council inauguration meeting. Let's listen. The scripture says... What God said to his people through the prophet Micah 2,700 years ago, what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with him. Okay, that's the 2022 Vancouver City Council inauguration meeting. My guest, Ian Bushfield, BC Humanist Association. Ian, what's wrong with that? Well, that prayer between the different representatives went on for about 13 minutes in the inaugural meeting when we timed it out. And it's a segment that didn't include everyone in the city, right? It favored belief in God over non-belief, and it represented the city as the Supreme Court uh, took in 2015 in the issue of the Saguenay Council prayer. It prioritized certain beliefs over others, and it excluded the non-religious and those who didn't feel they were reflected by one of the five representatives out there. Yeah. Okay, let's talk a little bit about your lawsuit here, specifically uh, against the city of Parksville here for similar circumstances here. So you're saying that 
there is what there is there is precedent here at the Supreme Court of Canada that makes this what clearly unconstitutional, illegal. Exactly. What, what is? Yeah, go ahead. The, yeah, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled in 2015 in a Quebec case that opening with a prayer, even a non-denominational one, there violated the state's duty of religious neutrality, which is something that comes out of our freedom of religion uh, in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So the way to think of this is you can't really express your religious freedom if the state is telling you that we are a Christian country. Like, you can't be not Christian, or you can't be equally not Christian if the state is taking that position. In the same way that if the state stood up there and said, we don't believe in God in this city, it would be just as offensive to the religious. So we're not calling for that kind of anti-prayer. We just want a neutral space where everyone is treated equally by the government. What about in schools? I remember when I was a kid attending public school, the day began typically with the, the Lord's Prayer. I, I remember standing in our school classroom and there would be O Canada and then there would be the Lord's Prayer. And that seems to have been shut down across the country or does that still happen in public schools? So that was largely ruled unconstitutional in the late 80s and early 90s. None of the cases ever made it to the Supreme Court of Canada, but there were cases in Ontario and British Columbia and Manitoba that all ruled it unconstitutional. And we did do a look across the country in the fall, and we found that Alberta and a couple other provinces still do have provisions allowing school prayer, Alberta and Saskatchewan most notably. And... Most schools don't do it, but there are a couple rural Saskatchewan schools that are still opening with the Lord's Prayer, public schools, not just like the Catholic ones. And so, you know, we're based in BC here. We can't take those lawsuits on. One of the challenges is for students or parents in those situations. They're often in deeply religious communities where to stand up and say, I object to this, makes you a pariah in your community. And it's really hard for individuals to challenge that, which is why as an organization, we're stepping up and taking these cases on because you know we we can take the hate i guess okay do you think that uh is it mostly christian prayer that you find the most objectionable here i mean i seem to recall i I mean i remember when david eby was sworn in as the premier of british columbia and there were indigenous representatives who did a blanketing ceremony for him which kind of has a a spiritual or religious significance, doesn't it? Like, do you think that there should be no indigenous blessings at public events too? So when we've looked at prayer, and I'll I'll put the indigenous uh, question to the side for a second. When we've looked at religious prayers, uh, we've almost always only found Christians doing it. Uh, Vancouver's kind of the notable exception where there were two Christians, but then there were some token minority face. Uh, And I think across the country, we found one city that had one opening with a non-Christian. So overwhelmingly, that is just what happened. But we take a universal approach here. Religious neutrality means just that. The Indigenous question gets more complicated because there is a fuzziness around what is cultural, what is reconciliation, what is an acknowledgement, and what is spiritual religious. Uh, We haven't solved that issue as an organization. It's one we're still talking about and thinking about. And we are tracking that a lot more municipalities are including land acknowledgements, which aren't religious, in their Mm. opening ceremonies. But there are also ones starting to invite Indigenous elders to give a blessing. Uh, We found one example in northern Ontario where they invited an Indigenous elder who also happened to be a representative of the local Catholic Church and his blessing invocation took on a more traditionally religious tone. And so I think there's a lot more thinking and questions we have to do Mm -hmm. about that without necessarily prescribing to representatives of First Nations how they should perform in these centers. Okay, what about the B.C. legislature? Because I've been covering that place for a long time, and there are still daily prayers there when the legislature is in session. Every... Uh, legislative session that I've seen has begun, begins with a prayer. So let me give you an example here of a recent prayer at the BC legislature in Victoria, BC United MLA, Renee Merrifield here. Let's listen. Life is complicated, but in you, there is simplicity, there is beauty. And this morning, as we watch the earth renew itself with spring, 
We gather and seek your guidance and blessing. In gratitude, we pray. Amen. Okay, what do you think of that? I mean, there are prayers every day at the legislature, right? Yeah, that's something we've called for to be changed or abolished. Uh, Notably, when we did a big study on this in 2019, we found that overwhelmingly, we took transcripts of all the different MLAs who'd given prayers for about 15 years, and overwhelmingly, they were Christian or theistic. And so we pushed for change, and they did actually update the language that it's now prayers and reflections. And we're going to do further studies on this to look at the difference, and we suspect there are more secular invocations or poetry or things that are more inclusive. Um, but we still want the legislature to be something that is neutral. And so yeah. it's not as easy to challenge. There's our constitutional arguments that the legislature can set its own rules and we and the Saguenay decision from the Supreme Court may not apply to it. Uh, we're still exploring that legally, but politically we do think there is an impetus. Uh, for example, the Premier of Manitoba, Wab Canoe, in the past couple of weeks announced that he's going to look at updating the prayer that opens that legislature to make it more inclusive, including of atheists and the non-believers. Yeah, I'm just looking at the BC Legislative Assembly website uh, and its, its note on this, and it talks about, as you mentioned, it's called prayers and reflections uh, daily at the legislature when it's in session. And it says it, it can include prayers of various faiths, and also non-religious reflections that may be delivered by MLAs or the speaker or a visiting member of the clergy or an indigenous elder may also deliver a prayer in the legislature. Why does that make it more acceptable? Like if it, if there's an option for a non-religious reflection in place of the prayer on any given day, does that make it any more acceptable to you? I think it's undoubtable that it is more inclusive than opening as some legislatures do with the Lord's Prayer every day. Uh, I think New Brunswick still does that. But for us, any day that there is a prayer of one specific faith is a day that it excludes people who don't agree with that faith. And so, you know, if one MLA opened tomorrow or next week with, you know, this is a legislature based on science and we reject God in this hall, it would be as offensive to the religious people in that room as yeah. the prayers to God for the atheists in that room. Okay. For people listening to this and, they, and they're and they hearing about maybe this for the first time, because I think maybe a lot of people, I talked to some people about this yesterday who didn't even, had no idea that there were daily prayers at the BC legislature when it's in session, for example. Um, and they're hearing about your lawsuit against the city of Parksville here. And they're maybe thinking like, like, who cares? You know, why, why should... Why should we tie up court resources over something like this that is just a very simple, brief acknowledgement um, at the beginning of a city council meeting? Like, what is, the, what is the problem here? Like, for people who are not offended by it, maybe they might even, like an atheist person might not be offended by this, but your thoughts, why do you think it's important? I think it's important because we have a constitutional precedent that says there have been people who felt harmed by this, who felt excluded by this, and we should have governments that are inclusive. Really, the frustrating thing for us is that we've written so many times to Parksville to ask them to change the practice, and they have just not gotten back to us, which is why we've had to go to this step. We wrote to all of these other communities. We wrote to Belcara, for example, and like within a few days, they held a special council meeting and passed a special resolution to say they'd never do it again. That was a kind of the extreme end of the reaction. Most of them just said they would review it and update their procedures accordingly. But that's all we were looking for. We were looking for a commitment to make sure that the future council meetings okay. are inclusive. We okay. didn't want well, to go to court. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to follow the court case closely. Ian, thanks for coming on to talk about it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Ian Bushfield there, BC Humanist Association. Over to you now. Phone me and tell me what you think of this. Would you care if there was a, a prayer, maybe a multi-faith reflection or prayer at a city council meeting? They do it every day at the legislature in Victoria when it's in session. Does it bother you? Phone me and let me know, okay? 604-280-9898. Star 9898 on your cell. Your call's next. This is the Mike Smith Show. What? All right, talking about religious prayers at city council meetings. Let's go to your phone calls here. John in Parksville. Hi, John, go ahead. 
Hi, Mike. Yeah, I'm a longtime listener, and I just wanted to say that uh, Parksville is quite unchristian in its treatment towards homeless people and the fact that they have not had a cold weather shelter in Parksville for, I mean, nothing stable for the last five years. It's all up and down, half-baked. So, yes, I know they have the, the look of Christianity, but the reality is they're, they're capitalists, mean capitalists. Okay, so what do you think about the prayer that was at their inaugural meeting there? I think that should be allowed? Well, it's, it's hypocritical. They, they don't act in a Christian way. They act in a capitalist way. I mean, you had the mayor on about uh, the um, vacation rentals, you know, and that they wanted to get an exemption. That's what they're most concerned about is uh, making a dollar. Oh, okay, John, thank you for that. Norris in Kamloops. Hi, Norris. Go ahead. Hey there. Uh, I mean, I'm an atheist, so I hope anyone out there that's of faith can just bear with me. Um, The fact of the matter is is this gentleman who was on your show is going after Christianity because it's the easy, low-hanging fruit. And it's quite popular right now to crap on Christians. Um, I imagine he probably would not have a problem with an Aboriginal person doing a spiritual prayer meeting, opening up something, or a an imam or uh, or anyone from Palestine. I bet you those aren't problems. It's just... Well, he he actually actually said the opposite, though. I think he said that any religious uh, acknowledgement would be offensive. But he did kind of... I did ask him about, like, an indigenous blessing or a ceremony. He said, well, is that religion or, or culture, he said, you know. So, I mean, look at look at what he said about um, he was kind of perturbed that they didn't have a Buddhist person there. Well, that yeah. would have been a bonus for him, right? That's one religion knocked off that he didn't have to worry about. But instead, he was uh, bothered that there wasn't one. So it, mm. it wasn't about religion. It's about Christianity. That's what it boils okay. down to. Okay. Okay. Norris, thanks for the call. Dave in Nanaimo. Dave, you got like 30 seconds here. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, separation of church and state should not be that... We cannot have any prayers. It should be mm. that our government cannot tell us what we need to believe. Unlike Muslim countries where if you do not be a Muslim and you practice any other faith, they will kill you. They will jail you. They will persecute you. In Canada, Thank you, Th- thank you Dave, for the call. I appreciate all the calls on that one. Interesting issue. I'm going to follow that lawsuit for you let you know how that one turns out. 